All right, good evening and welcome out to our evening service, midweek service. Go ahead and stand and turn to number 396, 396, constantly abiding. Sing it out on that first verse. There's a peace in my heart that the world never gave. Sing it out on the first. There's a peace in my heart that the world never gave. A peace it cannot take away. Though the trials of life may surround like a cloud, I've a peace that has come there to stay. Constantly above. We have the second or third verse. All the world seemed to sing of a Savior King. All right, let's try it again. All the world seemed to sing of a Savior and King when peace sweetly came to my heart. Troubles all fled away and my night turned to day. Blessed Jesus, how do this let's reach around and shake hands and fellowship just for a few moments as the pianist plays As we make our way back to our seats, let's sing it out on that chorus, constantly abiding. Constantly abiding, Jesus is mine. Constantly abiding, rapture divine. He never leaves me lonely. Jesus 
aren't you glad that that wonderful promise, I will never leave thee. I will never leave thee. You think about that. I'll never leave thee. Jesus is mine. I'm so glad that Jesus is mine. Amen? <clears throat> well, it's so good to see you tonight on a rainy day. It's been a rainy, kind of dreary day all day today. Um, but we're so thankful you made it out and you're here tonight. And uh, won't you actually be seated? We're going to have Pastor Rossi. Pastor Rossi, you come on up. It's good to have Pastor Rossi here with us tonight. Amen? <clears throat> it's always good to see him and his family. And his family's down in Florida, I think, aren't they? Yes, sir. And, uh, and so he's up here for a couple days. And uh, uh, so I asked him, I said, whenever you're here, would you mind just giving us a little update about what the Lord's doing, how the Lord's using him? And as an evangelist out of the church here, I'm excited to hear about, you know, what God's doing and, and how God's using uh, their family. And so <clears throat> I've asked him to come. Why don't you lead us in prayer and then give us an update real quick, okay? All right. Thank you, Pastor. And uh, it's good to be here. And how many are glad to be saved? Man, good to be in the house of God, and uh, great to be here to Granite tonight, and I didn't think I'd get that excited when I pulled up this morning and uh, got to go on campus, see some of the kids at school. I felt like I was at Christmas or something, and, and uh, having, having a great time, and again, tonight. You want me to pray first, and then give the update, or update? Uh, I'll give the update, and then I'll pray. And uh, I wrote a few things down we've been doing, but uh, since we left, uh, of course, we've uh, been in 12 different churches, and... Uh, I think three different states, and we went down to uh, down to Georgia and started a revival the end of January. Then we went down to Florida and did a, a held a meeting there, and then <clears throat> back up to Georgia again. Then uh, North Carolina, back down to Florida again. It was so nice we went back. Amen. And uh, <clears throat> we've been staying down there in the Panhandle and uh, that part of the world. And then uh, recently we went down to Ocala, Florida, and I've uh, been preaching meetings down there every weekend and most of the Wednesdays in between. So uh, God's been good. We put in a lot of miles, and uh, we've had four revival meetings and missions conferences. And uh, through those, we've seen 11 people saved and um, just been uh, a great blessing. Susan and Bethany are doing well. They stayed down where it was warm. Uh, I'm only here for one night, and so really just came in, and uh, we will be uh, here tonight. I'm flying back to be down to Ocala, down at uh, Pastor Bloom's church, and uh, I think Pastor White knows him, but Brother Andy Bloom at Central. So we'll be there for Easter Sunday over the weekend preaching, and then start making our way from there. We're actually going to fly to Washington State for uh, 11 days and preaching meetings out there, uh, come back and then start the trek back to uh, Baltimore. Uh, and so uh, we'll be in this area in April, end of April and May, preaching some revival meetings and whatnot. So our, we our website is finally up, and uh, pray for that. Uh, it's done, but it needs, a l I, I, my first impression was it just needs a lot of work and fine tuning. Our schedule will be on there, hopefully by the end of next week. We'll have the next few months, if you would pray for us and uh, continue praying for revival. And pray that God uh, helps us in these things. Uh, two Wednesday nights ago, uh, I was outside uh, of a little area, Crestview, Florida. And uh, while there, I got to go help a pastor at uh, the Vision Baptist Church. Uh, he, I met him at a field, literally, at about 5.30. He said, this is our new church, wet church. Uh, this is our new site. This is where we're going to build our new church. Over in the corner of the field was a big pile of steel and uh, all kinds of uh, wood and everything. These are the materials. And uh, so they got their, uh, their uh, job site done. They've got their property. They have five beautiful acres on Highway 98. Uh, the church is five years old. And uh, then uh, we went through all that and then down to where they're a meeting for church. They're meeting at his, uh, where he lives. He has a property about three miles away. Uh, man, they, they had a shed they were meeting in. They had uh, little rooms they were meeting in. They took me into the overflow room, uh, which was uh, his son's, uh, that's his son's garage, all set up with video. 
His grandson's bedroom is their nursery now. They took that over. And, man, they were having so much fun, fired up, excited. And uh, so uh, they're making requests for uh, Jehovah Jireh to help with their project. And it's a real blessing to be around some projects like this of people that are building churches for the glory of God, standing on the Bible, amen, and uh, preaching the gospel and seeing people saved. In Fruitland Park, Florida, this weekend, uh, we were the church. Man, they just have so many people on the line uh, that are getting, you know, either just got saved or about to get saved at uh, just exciting places. We were driving down Highway 98 in Destin, Florida, and I looked up, and there it was, John Smith's Sub Shop. And uh, I said, I can't get away from that guy. But anyway, uh, <laughs> so uh, there it was, right there, a living color. So <laughs> we thought that was funny, but... Uh, we've been praying for you, and we catch up with what's going on and uh, try to know what's what's happening. We're praying for the hunt. We won't be here for that hunt for the first time in years, but praying for a great Easter Sunday and Resurrection Day. And uh, how many of you just love this time of the year? This is great. This is our time of the year, soul winning time and people getting saved. So we're praying for all of you. So good to hear that Pastor White got his house and got settled. That was another blessing. And uh, to get through all that and to sell their house finally, uh, somebody has a travel trailer out there. I don't know whose that one is, but okay. <laughs> So <clears throat> that's called the Pastor Rocky House, amen? So that's where they go when they're bad. But uh, pray one for another. Let's pray that God uses us. And we've been keeping in touch about things and folks that are struggling and uh, with Mrs. Petty and others. Of course, the bridge yesterday was just, just, a, just a tragedy. And some folks died. They amount, announced some of those today. And you think of what that's going to do. It's going to affect an awful lot in this city uh, 8,000 jobs I heard over in the, in the marine terminal on the docks, but we'll see what happens, and let's pray that God uses it all for his good and uh, for our good and his glory. So let's pray together. Father, we are thankful to you for this place. Thank you for this church. Thank you for uh, getting Pastor White set up here and with his family and getting them settled in. And then, Father, we are praying that uh, you'll continue to bless. May we see many people saved in the days ahead. May the hunt uh, be a great day of salvation in this church. May the Spirit of God do a great work on Easter Sunday, prepare our hearts, prepare the church. And then, Lord, uh, we do pray that you'll bless the service, bless the pastors. He gives the, the lesson and the Bible teaching out tonight. Thank you for your goodness and grace. We do pray for the many that are struggling, that are shut in tonight. We pray your hand upon each one. Thank you for all that you are, and for every person that gets saved, we give you the glory and the praise and the thanksgiving. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, go ahead and stand one more time and turn over to number 349. 349. We're going to sing, I Need Thee Every Hour. Sing it out on that first. I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord, no tender voice like thine can peace afford. I need thee, oh I need thee, every hour I need thee, oh bless me now my Savior.
you can be seated. And if we can get the ushers ready to come and take up the offering. <clears throat> and while they are doing that, uh, we want to just remind you about Saturday. Saturday is our Super Saturday of Soul Winning. So we're going to have breakfast uh, here, and uh, then we will head up to Baltimore. So we're going to head to Baltimore to help the Baltimore Baptist Church with uh, hand out all kinds of invitations for their Easter uh, Sunday. And so uh, during the missions conference, the Lord laid on my heart to the need of helping them and just felt like it would be a good thing and trusting the Lord that, to that promise of give. We give of our time. I believe God will give back to us. And so let's give. We'll give to another church plant. Um, helping them to have a great Easter. I believe God will give us a great Easter. Amen? Amen. And so if you are going to head up to Baltimore, then what we'd like you to do is uh, to sign up and that uh, you're going to be riding on the bus. And so there's a sign-up sheet um, on the, at the welcome desk if you're planning on coming. Uh, that would help us to know what kind of vehicle we need to take people up. <clears throat> also, I, do, I did see there's some people that are going to be driving up. That's, that's fine, and, and that's fine to do as well. And so we plan on being there about 10 o'clock, and we'll leave about 12.30 or something like that is when we'll leave. So we're hoping to get back here by 1 o'clock. If you can't go up to Baltimore, still come for breakfast because we can send you out right here in this area. And so there's plenty of people here in this area to reach, but we, uh, we're going to be heading, most of us, I think, will be heading up to the Baltimore area. So that's, I think, <clears throat> the only announcement I want to remind you about besides just praying for Easter, and we'll talk about that in just a few moments. So let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Brother Doug, lead us in prayer, please. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, how grateful we are to be here in your house once again tonight. Father, we thank you for leading us uh, your way and allowing us to uh, be able to enjoy our uh, your, the fellowship and be able to sit under the teaching of your word once again. Father, we thank you for Pastor Rossi and all the work that you allowed him to do and bringing him our way so that he could give us a report. And we just pray that you will continue to bless him as he serves you. Uh, reaching out to many churches, uh, many revival meetings, and, and all that you have him have for him to do. We just pray that you'll bless him, give him travel mercies, and uh, may he see a great work done uh, in your name. Father, we thank you for this time that we can give back, the portion you so richly bless us with. We pray that you'll bless the gift and the giver alike, and that you'll multiply it for the furtherance of your work. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Gracie, for that special, that offertory. Let's go in our Bibles to James chapter 5. James chapter 5, <laughs> the book of James in chapter 5. We are going to do a little bit something different tonight, and um, we want to, we want to, we're going to take a break just for tonight, Lord willing, off of this Revelation study or future events study that we've been doing on Wednesday nights. And we're going to look here at James chapter 5, and I want you to look at verse 16. James chapter 5 and verse 16. And so look at what verse 16 says. What's the first word there? Confess. I just wanted to make sure you were there. Everybody's there. James chapter 5, verse 16. It says, confess everyone else's faults one to another. Is that what it says? Is that what that verse says? That's what we do, don't we? We talk about everybody else instead of our own faults, don't we? So confess everyone else's faults one to another. No, it doesn't say that, does it? It says confess your faults, your faults. We don't like to admit our faults, do we? But confess our faults one to another. And pray one for another. Hey, you know what? We've been on Sunday nights talking about, this past Sunday night, talking about the importance of church. And here's two commands given specifically to the church, what are we to do? We're to confess our faults one to another and pray one for another. And, uh, and so you look at that, confess your faults and pray one for another. Let me say this, uh, there are some churches that will take that uh, as public confession time. And so uh, they'll bring people up in front of people and they'll publicly confess their sin 
and um, and you know there may be a place for some things like something like that, but I've I know that there's some things that have just gone way too far, and um, some things we don't need to know, and but there's some churches that practice that literally practice that, and I don't think that's healthy. It's not really edifying the body of Christ when you get up and start saying some things. And so uh, we need to be careful about that. But confess our faults one to another, pray for one another, that you may be healed. Now look at this last part here, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man. How many of you are righteous? You're saved. Anybody in here righteous? All right. Your righteous man, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. That's the phrase we want to focus on here tonight. That phrase, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Let's bow our heads for, for prayer. God, thank you so much for tonight and our time together as we look to your word for help and for encouragement. I pray, God, you'd use the lesson here tonight. And uh, really, as I kind of share my heart a little bit with the folks, our church family here, I pray, God, that you'd use it and, and help us to, to get a burden for reaching people, Help us to get a burden for believing that you can do great things for us. So, Lord, I pray you'd help us to pray and to trust you for the great things. And we'll thank you for what you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, I believe this wholeheartedly. I believe that God is doing some great things right here at Granite Baptist Church. You believe that? Say amen. amen. I believe that. <clears throat> and I think and I know that over the next few months we've got some very busy activity. Got a lot of activity that's going to be taking place. <clears throat> for instance, we have... Uh, some potential staff uh, that are coming in. They're going to be visiting. So when they visit, uh, there's a young lady coming, uh, I think sometime in the middle of 10th and 11th of April, something like that. So when she comes, you need to be, behave your best. Be your best. Amen? And uh, behave and be nice and kind, all those things. Uh, but we have staff coming in and people checking out the ministry here to come here to work. In fact, we have some people calling us to want to come here to work. That's kind of different. But praise God for that. And, uh, and so it's a busy time. <clears throat> we have uh, uh, new staff moving here. In, in uh, May, we have the, uh, and I've never have been a part of, of that, but of this, but the 1st of May, we have the Jewish outreach young ladies are going to be here with us. And so they're going to be here. Uh, I think there's four of them that are coming. And uh, then we have staff coming in the end of May and some coming in the middle of June, new staff members and things and so trying to get them in different places and put them in different places, it's kind of like it's kind of getting crazy, you know, moving all the pieces of the puzzle together, and it's all the fun things that we do. And I'll tell you, I'm excited about seeing what the Lord is going to do. So <clears throat> we've got that. Uh, there's also, you know, with that excitement and with trusting God for great things, uh, there's also the bullseye that gets put on our, black, on our back. And you know that's the devil. The devil is coming after us as well. With trying to see people saved and having soul winning efforts and, and bringing new people in to help us to get bus ministry started and, and other things like this going again. All the excitement, the devil's going to come. And I'll tell you, you know, we had a little bit of a disruption a couple Sunday nights ago. You remember that, the disruption we had? Uh, I have, it, it has not stopped. And so just pray. Pray for, um, you know, this lady that came in. You really pray for her. Um, because it hasn't stopped. There's this, this things almost every week that we have to deal with uh, in regards to this lady and things that she says and things that she's doing. And so if you would, really pray for that lady and pray that she'll get saved. And, and, uh, and so, uh, but I've spent a lot of time with that. And um, last night, you know, there's a man walking the parking lot at 2.30, scared Caitlin to death, I think. The really rattle her a little bit. She's from... The, up in Pennsylvania, you know, in the farmland of Pennsylvania, I think, and there's a man walking from this side of the parking lot down to the buses and about middle way, then back to the buses, then back here, and, and most of the time his hands are in the air and he is chanting something. And that's how Caitlin heard him. And so she, uh, she called the police on him and they came and escorted him out. And I don't know what all that's about, but, uh, you know, he's chanting something as he's walking with his hands in the air. Um, uh, you know, it could be something. I don't know. But with all that being said, I believe there's a bullseye on us that the devil is going to try to just begin to take us down because he's not going to be excited. He's not real excited about the things that God is going to do. 
We've got several big days, special days ahead of us. We've got our Resurrection Sunday that's just right around the corner and that egg hunt. And we're looking forward to seeing how God blesses that. We've got a baby dedication Sunday, and, and hopefully we'll have visitors come for that, family members of those that might dedicate babies. Really, it's a parent and baby dedication is really what it is, isn't it? Um, and so, at least that's how I've always approached it, is we dedicate the parents and ask God to be with them and help them to raise those children for the Lord. And, uh, and so we have parent baby dedication coming up. We have a Heaven Sunday where we're going to try to tell as many people as we can about heaven and get them saved. Mother's Day is always a big thing. Summertime, vacation Bible school and camps and uh, weddings. And for me, yay, and graduations, you know, all those school graduations. That's all always fun. I often thought, as I look back, we got married. We were, Tammy and I were married in May, May 22nd. And out of all the times to get married, that's probably one of the worst times if you're going to be in a school ministry because you've got kindergarten graduation and you've got uh, high school graduation. You've got end of the year things going on in schools. That's why when we had our 25th anniversary, we came here to preach for the first time. When was it? August. <laughs> to get away for our 25th anniversary back in May. So we finally got away uh, in August when we came here the, first, the very first time to preach, uh, if you'd remember that this summer. And so it's, it's just busy. A lot of things are going on. And what I'd like to do tonight is I'd like to do something different. If I, you'd allow me to do this tonight, to take a kind of a break off our Bible study. And you know usually I'll take a passage of Scripture and I'll, I'll try to break that thing apart the best way that we can. But tonight I'd like us just to think about that verse of the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And I'd like us to just focus on, on how to pray for special days. How to pray for special days. And if you'd allow me to take and share with you, you know, some of the things I pray for as we get ready to have big days and special days. Now, on the back of your prayer sheet, it's blank. It's got a bunch of lines on it. There's not an outline because I want you to take and I want you to write down some of the things that I'm going to share with you on what to pray for and as we get ready to go into a special day. Easter Sunday is right around the corner. Resurrection Sunday is almost here. And I like this time of the year. And so I'd like to share with you some things on how to pray for big days. So number one would be this. Okay, as we pray, we need to pray for one another. Okay, let's pray for one another. In fact, we find that here in verse 16, that we're to pray one for another. You see that? Now, you say, what do we pray one for another? Let me tell you some things I pray for as we get ready to go into big days, and I'm praying for one another. Number one is this, all right? It's, it's the matter of sickness. <laughs> sickness. There'd be no sickness because we want everybody to be a part. Amen? I don't want to see anybody miss Resurrection Sunday and some of our special days that we have coming up. But uh, sure enough, this time of the year, is, it gets pretty outside, and there's flowers on the trees and all that. People start getting allergies and getting sick and all that. So let's pray that no one is sick and that we can have all of our families here to be a part as, as a church family on Resurrection Sunday. Let's pray also, another thing I pray, is for everybody's attitude, their attitude. I don't know how it is in your family, but sometimes family members can get attitudes. I know I can get attitudes. I know I've got family members that can get attitudes at times, right? And so we all sometimes have some attitudes that we might get. And so let's pray for one another's attitudes. As, as a church family, we mentioned this on Sunday night. You know, we're uh, one of the things we talked about is as a church, we're a body. That's what God says, doesn't he? That we're a body of believers. We're, we're a church body. And, and everybody, the, the hand is not more important than the head and, and all those things. And we all function together. And so that's how God has put us. We're also a family. You remember that? We talked about a family. And as a family, I love my family, I care about my family, but I know sometimes there's attitudes. And let's pray for our attitudes, that our attitude, our heart would be right. Let's pray that God will use us to invite people to come, that God will use us to invite people to be here. You know, we're praying one for another. I want you to be a success. I want the God to use you in a great way of getting people here in church. And let's pray that God will use us to get visitors here. 
one of the things that we've done over the last few weeks is we had that little QR code. It's been in your bulletin. It was on the back of the chairs. Is it still in the back of the chairs, some of them? Looks like, mm, no, it looks like they're all gone. All right. They probably got caught on somebody's jacket or somebody's <laughs> pants or something like that, like it did on mine. But <clears throat> we had those little QR codes there on your, on your pew chairs uh, so that you could just easily scan. And, uh, and we gave you a text to be able to invite and a script that you could use and trying to get you to think. You could scan that little code and it would get you to think about who to invite for these special days, especially Resurrection Sunday. And so I'm praying that God will use you uh, to get visitors here. And uh, let's pray for our visitors. As our visitors come, you say, how do we pray for our visitors? Or we'll write these things down. Yeah, we need to pray that God will wake them up. Amen? That's the first thing. God will wake them up. I know when I first got saved and I wasn't going to, used to going to church, I used to pray. We were, we were uh, I would be staying in a house and with a bunch of other guys and we had partied or something like that and I got saved. God began to work in my heart about going to church. <clears throat> and I would pray. I didn't have an alarm clock. We didn't have cell phones back then. I didn't have an alarm clock, but I'd pray. I'd say, God, please, I want to go to church in the morning. Wake me up. Please wake me up at least an hour and a half so I can get home, get cleaned up, and go to church with my mom and dad. That's what I prayed. And you know what? Every Sunday, God would wake me up. But you know what? I didn't get up. I just laid there for a few weeks. Then eventually I got up. But I just fought that thing for a few, few uh, Sundays. God would wake me up, and I just would roll over and go back to sleep. But I, I thought to myself, you know, this is God, God's doing some things, and that's just praying. So pray that God will get them up. Uh, pray that they'll not have the interference. You, you may, I don't know if, if, uh, if you have children or not, but it is sometimes hard when you have many children and they're little, getting them all to church on time, okay? And making sure everybody's getting it all together. At one point, we had four, four and under, Okay, uh, so there was Melanie, she was four, Leah was two, and then the boys came, they're just babies. And uh, it was hard, you know, getting everybody together. Took my help trying to get them together and get them to church and all those things. Uh, and so let's pray for these families, young families that have children, getting them here, no interference, no flat tires. You ever get ready to come to church and you got a flat tire? That ever happened to anybody? That's happened to me or something doesn't happen on your vehicle, you know, something breaks down on your vehicle, there's always, there's interference that can happen. And so let's pray, God will wake them up and no interference. Let's pray this about these visitors that come. Let's pray that they'll feel welcome here. We want our visitors to feel welcome here. Amen? And so this is, this is important for us. Now I'm telling you, this is just very practical things. And this is, you know, not a normal type of lesson on Wednesday night. Uh, but as a pastor, I'm, I want you to be prepared for some of these big days that we have coming up in church. And I want when people come in, uh, there ought to be our people aren't going up to them, smiling. Doesn't hurt to smile. Amen. Being friendly, shaking hands, making them feel welcome, getting to know people. Amen. Amen. And just making people feel welcome. I try to do that. And uh, I'd like to ask you to make sure you do that. It, we ought to be known for being a friendly church and a loving church and a caring church. Amen. And so let's make, let's make those visitors that come in feel welcome. Let's pray that if they're lost, they'll be saved. Amen? And let's pray for their salvation. Let's be praying right now for those people that come in on Sunday as they hear the gospel. I mean, I'm going to preach a message on the resurrection, and I will share the gospel. And let's be praying right now. This is what I do. I pray that God will work in their hearts and that they'll come to know Christ as their personal Savior. So for save, our lost people to be saved, and also this, for uh, backslidden Christians to get right with God. Let's pray for that as well. Let's pray for backslidden Christians to get right with God and rededicate their hearts to the Lord. I'm very thankful that, you know, well, not th I'm, I'm thankful for a Christmas service because in a Christmas service, it was a special kids program for Christmas, that my dad, who was saved in Vietnam, he was saved in the Easter Sunday service in Vietnam in a chapel that they had on Easter Sunday. 
but when he came back over here, he got in church for a little bit, and then he got out. And pretty much all my life, he wasn't in church. Mom wasn't in church. Mom decided she'd go back to church when I was about 16 years old, started taking my younger brother and younger sister, and I was the oldest. And it was during a Christmas program. Uh, but Easter works just as well, right? But it was during the Christmas program. My brother and sister were singing. They were little kids, younger kids at the time, and doing something in this Christmas program. So they invited Dad to come. Dad was backslidden away from the Lord, and he came. And on that Sunday, he rededicated his life to God, and he started going to church. He was in church. Mom was in church. My younger brother was in church. My younger sister was in church. There was only one that wasn't in church, and that was me. Right? I'm 19, and they, then Dad started coming after me. Okay, that I'd get saved. And boy, you think about it. God used a special service to get a backslidden man right with him. Right? And, and ultimately, I got, got saved. And, and, you know, the rest is history from that. So let's pray for those, that, those visitors that come. They'll feel welcome, have good health, no interference. Uh, they'll be saved if they're, if they're lost. And that they will get right from, with God if they are far away from God. And, uh, and, and let's pray in this service, because as we have many people here on Resurrection Sunday, and that's what we're trusting God for, is we have other special days throughout uh, the uh, upcoming weeks. Let's pray for no distractions. No distractions. Right? And let's just pray that God would just, you know, the devil doesn't stir up things. But that the, that the service just is there's, it's distraction free. Because the last thing that we want is uh, for distractions. Now let me talk about distractions a little bit. You know, it's a distraction to people. Uh, and I'm just talking to you as church family. Okay, It's a distraction to people when we get up and move when it's preaching time. It's a distraction. All right? Somebody sitting all the way in the back. Somebody up here gets up and moves and goes out. It is a distraction, isn't it? It's a distraction if there's talking and stuff going on back there in that foyer. People on the back row can hear. <laughs> All right? And it is a distraction. Uh, the, the nursery over here, that's a distraction at times, isn't it, moms? Is it moms over there? Yeah, you hear those babies crying, don't you, sometimes. And you think, is that my baby? <laughs> you know, and there's nothing we can do about that. There's nothing we can do about that. Uh, but that, that is a distraction, okay? Sometimes this baby's in the service. And, uh, you know, if, if a baby's in the service, I appreciate moms and dads want to have their children in the service and things like that. But also if there is a, a visiting family with us, we could let them know about the room over here that they could go in with the, the, the child that may be a distraction because they can watch the service and yet they can be quiet back there. So, I mean, we are trying, that room is a blessing because it's minimizing distractions. Amen? And so, let's be careful about those distractions. Let's not be a distraction. I'd like to say, just be aware of this, okay? Uh, and the ushers need to kind of be aware of this as well, or the, those in security, that if there's special music going on, somebody's singing a special, then if you're, you see it, then just kind of stay in the back until the special music's over. Because you don't know what God is doing in a person's heart while somebody else is up here singing. Okay? Choir singing, special music's going on. Let's try to be smart and minimize those distractions. Okay? And we can do it. So let's, let's work at that. All right? But let's pray that the services will be distraction-free and there would not be any distractions or any interference here in the service. All right, so we're still praying one for another, okay? So I've given you some things we need to pray one for another about sickness, the attitude, <clears throat> God uses us to get visitors. Then we jumped off on visitors a little bit. Let me ask you to pray for me. Can I do that? All right, so write these things down and praying for me, okay? Pray for me that I'll have the power of God as I preach, okay? Pray for me that I'll have the power of God. Pray also that I'll have the right messages. Have the right messages. You know, we've got special days coming up. Uh, my message on the resurrection, I hope, on Resurrection Sunday, I hope it'll be a help. Mother's Day, 
you know, we'll have a message, Lord willing, on mothers. And Heaven Sunday, I'll be preaching on heaven. I like preaching about heaven. Heaven's a wonderful place. Amen? And so just pray that God will give me the right messages. <clears throat> and um, I can tell you this, as I preach those messages, I, you know, I, I don't want it just to be. I've, I preached messages here that I preached over there, you know, sometimes. But even as I do that, I, I want to be careful because I don't want to just get in that as a pastor for here. I don't want to get in a routine of just saying I've got a message I could preach it here. I want to prepare my heart for you and, and you're the people that God has put me here as the shepherd of this flock. Uh, and, and I want to make sure that my heart's right. So just really pray for me as I preach those messages. Pray that I'll have full liberty to preach without distractions. We don't want distractions out there, but, but it's a distraction sometimes when, when get you all focused when some of the distractions are taking place, even from the preaching. Not just you are distracted, but sometimes I'm distracted. And then pray for my health. And, um, you know, I've got a pretty good health, but just continue praying for my health. Uh, it, could, it could get affected any time of the year with allergies and those things. Uh, I have seasonal allergies. In fact, my doctor used to tell my mom I just had an eastern shore nose. She'd take me in there. I was all stuffy and congested. No, that's just an eastern shore nose. And it seemed to have been with me if I was in Pennsylvania. I've got that still the eastern shore nose or New York. I, I just figured it out. I don't know if Dr. Coles knew what he was talking about as much. It would be called an allergy today. That's what it is. These seasonal allergies is what I have. So <clears throat> pray for my health and those things. But I appreciate it if you pray for me, that God will give me wisdom in that as well. Now, let me give you another thing to pray for. And this is not only do we pray for one another, uh, but let's also pray for the church services. Let me write, give you some things to pray for the church services here. All right? Let's pray for this. Let's pray that the music will minister to the hearts of God's people. And, or really all the people. Let's pray that the music will minister to the hearts of people. I believe this. I, don't, I, I believe we don't have to get all worldly with our music. The, <laughs> Brother Kim, you're, sp you're special on Sunday. I think it's in our hymn book. I still remember that special. You know, that, that spe special still speaks to my heart. Precious Lord, take my hand, hold me close. You know, let me stand. Amen? It ministers to my heart. Those old hymns. And I'm not against new things, but we don't need to get worldly and fleshly and all that kind of stuff. Uh, let's pray for the music, that it will minister to the hearts of the people of God. Let's pray that the services, as we think about the services, that the services will be a help and encouragement to the people that are here. The services will be a help and encouragement. Let's pray, th pray this one. That everything that takes place on all these special days coming up, everything would glorify and please the Lord. Everything we do, we ought to be doing it to the glory of God. And let's pray that everything we do glorifies the Lord. As I think about this service order and as we put together a service order, I don't want it just to be mechanical. I want God to lead us. I want God to lead the song leader to pick out the songs that are here. And I want everything to be going towards a purpose and that it all to be to glorify the Lord and please the Lord. <clears throat> Pray that when the invitation is given, that God will work in a mighty way during the invitation. Pray for that invitation. This is how to pray for the services. And pray that God will work, that people will be saved and decisions will be made during the invitation. Now, <clears throat> let me just give you a few other things to pray for as we think about our special days coming up. Especially on Resurrection Sunday when we have a big egg hunt outside. Let's pray for good weather. Amen? <laughs> We're praying for good weather. And you know what I'm praying for? It, I always pray this way. And you never know when you're in, in times like this, March, April, April showers, bring May flowers, they say, but seems like whenever I try to do something outside, there's always weather gets messed up into it and all that. But it seems like through the years, and sometimes it's just perfect. But let's just pray that God will make it not too hot, not too cold. It'll just be nice, perfect weather. Amen? Not cloudy, 
Uh, not like today, you know, it was a just dreary day. It's, the weather be perfect just to get people up, and God knows. And so, um, you know, we, we don't want like rain, rain, like it has been supposed to be raining today, raining tomorrow, I think. Then it's supposed to get sunny on, um, no, it's supposed to, I saw, or, or just it changed. I think Saturday there's now a chance of rain. And so uh, Sunday, let's just pray that God gives us a beautiful day. And <clears throat> let's do this also as we think about coming up on this Saturday. Let's pray that God will use all of the invitations that have been given out here. Um, we've almost given out all of our Easter invitations here. Let's pray that God will use the invitations that we give out in Baltimore that it can help that church. And, and you never know how God could use us as we go into Baltimore this Saturday. You never know what God's doing even now. But let's pray that God will use us as we hand out those invitations and invite people to come. The Bible tells us here that the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man, it availeth much. I believe God answers prayer. Amen? And so we need to be praying for all of these special days and praying that God will work in a great way uh, on these special days and in the weeks to come and that everything will go together for the glory of God. Amen? So here's what I want to do. I want to do something different tonight. Okay? Usually we'll have our prayer sheet. Usually we'll highlight some things on the prayer sheet. Usually we'll read the missionary prayer letter. But what I'd like to ask you to do is I'd like to ask you to find a partner. Okay? And if you don't want to find a partner, that's fine. If you'd like to pray by yourself, that's fine. Okay? But I'd like for you to find a partner. It, it could be three, two or three. Uh, and to just find a place in the auditorium here and to get along with God and to pray. Okay? You know, Wednesday night is not just Bible study. It is supposed to be prayer meeting, but I think a lot of it is Bible study. And we do that here. You look, we teach the Bible for 40 minutes and we pray for five minutes. <laughs> and God's house is supposed to be a place of prayer. Amen? But let's take the next 10 minutes or so and let's pray. Now, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. When you're done praying, when you're finished praying, if you would just quietly get up out of your seat and walk out of the auditorium. Don't stay here talking to somebody because you'll be a distraction. Amen? So when you're finished, just quietly slip out. You can go out in the foyer and you can talk. We'll keep the door shut back there and um, you can talk out there if you want fellowship out there if you want but let's just take the next 10 minutes of this of this at the close of this service find somebody to pray with take the prayer sheet that you have in front of you take these requests that i've laid out for you and let's pray and ask god to just work in a big way this upcoming sunday amen all right so if you'd like to find a partner take time to do that husband and wives can pray together feel free to do that Men and men praying together, ladies and ladies praying together, please. <clears throat> and let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask God to just work and ask God to meet the needs here tonight. And as you're done, just finish up quietly to yourself and slip out the back door and we'll go our separate ways.